You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast, your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. I'm Pete Newsom, joined again by Ricky Baez. Ricky, how are you on this beautiful morning? Halfway through 2023, Pete. Is your Christmas tree still up? No, it's not. Yours oh, okay. is? I hope not. I Okay, here's the secret. You ready? I took mine down about a month ago. About I, a month ago, I took it down. <laughs> I'm sorry for your neighbors. Do, do, do your Christmas <laughs> lights up too? No, are you that, no, no, no. Are you the, that guy? You're, you're that one. No, no, no. So here's the thing. Like the lights that comes off around the beginning of February. I'm Puerto Rican. We celebrate Three Kings Day. Um, so in, but inside my house, like I've been to Tennessee, there's this place that just celebrates Christmas all year round. I love Christmas. So it was really a hard time to take that tree down. So yeah, last month is when we did it. Christmas no in May. Okay, fair That's enough. That's right. <laughs> Not quite July. You're off the hook. But uh, gotcha. <laughs> but today, Ricky, we are talking about the best practices for managing a remote workforce, something that hmm. is on a lot of companies' minds these days. Um, pretty big deal uh, in 2023. Yeah, well, I mean, three years into it, uh, it it's the, the remote workforce management aspect is nothing new for us, but it is something new for everybody. Uh, came, uh, you know, come 2020 in March, uh, in March of 2020. So um, this is something that whether people were ready or not, they were thrust into, right? So it's good that we're talking about this right now. They were thrust into it and there to stay, right? right. You, you, you can't get out of it whether you want to or not. And that is a different show, of course, because yeah. we know that um, that's also a big struggle right now where companies are, I, I think companies, if they felt it would it was working well and that they could manage their workforce effectively and uh, productively, right? That's a big, a big piece of this. You think they'd be inclined to stick with it because there are inherent cost savings as we know um, and employee satisfaction increases, which yeah. we also know. I just read a, a study a couple of days ago that is saying that the majority of college students now coming out into the workforce expect to be able to work from home. And <laughs> that's shocking, really. I mean, it's not shocking given where we are in in this evolution, but imagine that three years ago, well, four years ago, imagine that stat. It would no college student would have expected to work at home. That would, it would have been less than one percent, probably. I I agree with that. Now, even before I was in HR, I did have a job where I did work from home. We had a work from home process, but that was, I like you said, I made up a small percentage of the U.S. population that actually work from home versus right now, exactly. Look, look I'm a professor as well, you know, part-time at night, and I do see some college students that have that, that, that expectation. And Here's the thing, Pete, I, I feel bad for people who have that expectation. This is just me. I feel bad because don't you miss the whole office environment? Um, we're recording this, so I'm going to say, yes, I miss it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, well, no, no, I don't. I, no? I, okay. I, 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 I don't. I miss some aspects of it, but as a whole. Uh, no, I, I think uh, there's so many conveniences that come with working yeah. at home. Um, I, I just enjoy it. I have to I have to be transparent with that. Um, okay. And but I do see that there's pros and cons to it. Um, and as I've expressed to you before, I'm concerned about young professionals who don't get the chance to build their own networks um, and, and learn from you know, more senior people. And, and there's a, there's a downside to that as well as being isolated at home uh, for those who may live alone or just with a yeah. roommate um, you need human interaction. I get a lot of human interaction already. I, I do have a large network. I've been mm -hmm. in the professional workforce for more than two decades and I have a very full house with four with four kids. They're not all here uh, anymore, unfortunately, yeah. but I'm not someone who needs um, to go find a you know, human interaction. It comes to me whether I want it or not. So <laughs> that is one thing, but for those who, who are younger, I, I do worry about it. Um, yeah. Do you think that's uh you think that's valid concern? Um, I do because it, it's, we just proved that 
it's we're two different individuals and we have different points of view on it. And there's a huge chance that organizations today are going to hire this exact type of employees that we're talking about right now. Some people who do like work from home, some people who do not like work, who do not like to work from home. So that's why I'm glad we're talking about this because from a leadership perspective, how do you manage that? Because if you pick one over the other, you run the risk of alienating an entire side, an entire percentage of the workforce. So from a management perspective, how do you make everybody happy? Well, you can't, right? Yeah. We know that. That's an, yeah. and, and that's probably not, shouldn't be anyone's objective or goal because you're, you're going to fail. And if, and if you right. took a poll... Just by asking the question, I think you're, you're getting yourself in trouble, right? Because if, uh -huh. it, and that's something I've learned over the years with good intentions, and we know what happens with good intentions or those lead. If you ask, if those who uh, answer one way and don't get their way, right? If they say, I want to work at home, and you say, well, everyone's coming back to the office, they're, they're, they're not going to be happy in that yep. scenario. So better not to ask at all, but you do want to consider all of the pros and cons. So let's talk about those for a, little, okay. for a little bit. So from a management perspective, let's focus on that. I can go, I think we, everyone talks about the employees and we know where employees stand with this, but from a management perspective, what are the pros to, to a remote workforce? I'll start with cost savings. Okay. Enormous cost savings in terms of physical office space that is expensive for Many companies that is their second largest expense after their after payroll, that can go away, can go away. I mean, that's a big that's a big pro. Yeah, yeah. So I I I agree with that hundred percent. Another pro that I see from for, from a management perspective is now this is just from my point of view. I I like the idea of giving employees the flexibility of work of picking where they can work where they're comfortable right so i it, it that's just from my perspective because i get i get the cost saving piece right and i also understand that i want to make sure that my employees have everything they need so they can be successful in their role so I think this is part of it. If you give somebody that kind of flexibility and that kind of trust, because at the end of the day, it, it does involve some kind of trust. I like the idea of giving the employees that kind of an environment so they can thrive. And now understandably so, that is something that not every employee likes because a con to this, Pete, a con is that if you as a leader are managing an entire team that's, that's virtual, the risk you run is there is a loss of humanity. There's a loss of a human touch out there that I think leaders have to make up um, make up in some other form or fashion that way the employee feels like they're part of a team. What do you think? Oh, I think I think that is a must. Yes. You you, you need to do that. Um that that's part of that, you know, so that's a con, right? Yeah, that, that, yep. that, that, that has was to a be con. considered. You have to to think about it. Um, and that's hard. Right, because we're creating, we're having to create new habits that, that didn't yep. previously exist. But let's stick with the pros for a minute, because you okay. you, you you know touched on the ability to work anywhere. I think, mm -hmm. and so we know the benefit of that again for for the employee. But from a management perspective, there's real concerns that come with that. Um, so while it's a pro, and in, and in, I think of it as a pro where it expands your workforce, uh, yep. or I'm sorry, your candidate pool. Right. Um, you can now you're no longer limited to hiring from your local geography. You can hire potentially from any uh, corner of the globe. Mm -hmm. um, an interesting phrase since the globe is round, unless you're, you're not flat. a flat earther, are you? No. OK, so from any corner of the globe. <laughs> Although it would have been an interesting turn of events for this podcast if I would have said yes. <laughs> yes, it would. We'd have to create a new one. Yes, <laughs> an entirely That's new right. podcast. Uh, but. You know, if you, um, so that is, that, that's a, that's a great thing. I mean, no, yeah. indisputably, I think, but where your employee is actually going to sit brings up a potential con along with it. Um, now I'll, I'll, I'll say, I, yeah, I don't know if I've told you about this, but four corner resources has a relationship that we've established with a company called active comply and what they do is a remote employee assessment that uh, allows employers to know uh, what 
where they're to confirm where their remote employees are sitting, right? Based on their IP address, their geolocation, they have the ability to put all of uh, about seven different things in a custom report. Um, you know, internet speeds, you know, even a, a, you know, the ability to ensure uh-huh. that uh, your employee is uh, is working in a private location with, with your camera, right? They have Active Comply gives employers a, an extra level of security uh, and confidence that their remote employees are where they're supposed to be working in a, in a safe environment. And, and if you just think about the potential risk, right? If I tell my employee, you can work anywhere. And mm-hmm. we do tell our employees that. But if you're in an industry where that employee is typing in confidential information onto their onto their computer and they're sitting in a Starbucks doing it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> who's thinking about that, right? Someone exactly. needs to be. Well, that's yep. the solution that Active Comply uh, has created. So it can be used for pre-employment. Wow. We're the only staffing company, Four Corner it Resources, the only staffing company in the country that is offering that with pre-employment just like a, a drug test or a background check where we can verify that the remote employee is where they say they are and, and in a location that is is safe and and um, and private. So those kind of considerations wow. weren't something, that wasn't something anyone was thinking about in the not too distant past. And now it's a must. So um, really excited to, to have the partnership with Active Comply because pretty cool. these guys are, yeah, they're, they're um, trailblazers in this space. So um, would you have thought of something like that? Absolutely not. A couple of years ago? <laughs> Absolutely. As, uh, as a matter of fact, once we're done here, I'm going to look them up. I want to see if they existed pre-pandemic. This seems like something that was spawned. Now, obviously, there is there is organizations that always have people working from home even before the pandemic. But now that that happened, it must have, compl- like Zoom, it must have shot up their stock like 3,000%. Well, I, 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 it, let's just say the company hasn't been around that long, right? Yeah, so well, there you is, go. You know, they, yeah. They're innovators in the space. That's awesome. And they are, um, you know, it's not a coincidence that they're, they're, they've come to market recently. Um, but I, I love the solution. I'm really excited to uh, that, that we're able to offer it. But but back on track, back on track yeah. to the remote employee. So that is something that um, it does have to be considered as a yep. potential uh, risk for you, for you as a business, but what are the other pros? Can you think of any, any other? So, um, ex, you know, expanded candidate pool cost savings. And by the way, I mean, I said rent, I didn't even talk about furniture and, and other, the other things that, that go along with being, um, in an office. I mean, those expenses really add up. Um, trust me, I'm paying for an empty office right now. I know. Uh, yeah, you are. <laughs> I, I you <laughs> yeah, you are. And I'm sure that hurts. I get it. But, you, but, but you know what, but you're doing it right, Pete, because you're letting people pick where they get to work so long as they perform. And that's what, you know, it, it, it's, that's an expectation across any for-profit organization in the nation. So, but let me throw this one in there because you said something earlier about it. It expands from a recruitment perspective. It expands your your recruiting canvas, and I agree with that. That's a that's a pro. Now, Bob, it could easily become a con if I got to throw my HR stuff in there, man. If HR does not partner with this with these initiatives, because you can't just open up the border. <laughs> you can't just open up the uh, the uh, the. Hey, now I need I need a little. We need a little laugh track with that right now. Ricky. <laughs> I know. Where, where where is it? Is this it? Hold on. Okay. What was did, you, did you beat me to it? Okay. I think I did. I think I did. <laughs> no, I was gonna I, mean, I was gonna go with this one. Oh, mine's not working. All right. You're, you're the pro. With <laughs> I this. heard it. I heard there. it. It's a little. T- <laughs> no, but look, it, it's it's if you open up that recruiting canvas, you got to be strategic about it. Right. Because you don't want to have all your employees. All of a sudden they move to San Francisco, California, nothing against San Francisco, California. But if you're in HR, you know, California is a beast of his own. And, hey, Ricky, and first from- of all, no one's moving to San Francisco, well, well, I mean, yeah, California I <laughs> and Secondly, yes, you're right. That is a great consideration to bring up given the, I, I won't I won't interrupt you. I'll let you finish your thought, but I'm really glad you brought that. You're no, you made up. me laugh because nobody's going. I mean, you know, right? You're right. What everything happened over there. I got it. Sorry, San Franciscoans. Is that what they're called? San Franciscoans? Let's just go with that. Yeah, San Franciscoans. Um, and no, look, it, it's it, you want to partner with HR because you want to make sure from a business perspective that you're doing uh you're being fiscally responsible 
with your recruiting efforts. You want to go into a state that does not have a lot of burden on the employer, sick pay, all those things. If you're in the restaurant business, if you go to Washington state, their minimum wage for service is like $13 an hour plus the tips versus everywhere else is two thirteen plus a tip. I didn't know that. Out. So it's an entirely different model than the rest of the country. On no, it is. It is. And I know that because I used to work for Darden restaurants and we had a lot of issues with that. And that created some P and L uh, uh, concerns for the leadership over there. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, but um, everywhere else it, it's you, you can't just blindly say, ah, yeah, I'm just going to move over to New York or Connecticut or that tri-state area or the highest tax state in the land, uh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so from a from a work that's come from a um, uh, fiscal perspective, let's be strategic about when you open up that recruiting landscape. And do you think that um, companies find this out very quickly, but I, I don't know if uh, the companies who operate just in a single state realize how uh, how different the laws are from state to state in terms of employer obligations uh, for mm. what they have to provide employees. And you know, California, I think, is 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 the worst by far um, mm. in terms of you know, we're in Florida and but so different. I mean, so different. So your employer burden, your cost of payroll is infinitely higher. Well, it's not infinitely higher. It's, it's it, it, there is a limit to it, yeah. but it's a high limit. And it, like you, you mentioned with the, the Washington state um, restaurant uh, you know, payroll, the way that that's different. It's, it's an entirely different list of considerations. So it, I'm glad you brought it up because that can be a pro, but it can also be a con. Yeah. And I think it'll be interesting to see how that affects state laws uh, it, it, over the years over yeah. to come because companies aren't stupid. I mean, if it's costing you 25% more to have a, an employee on your payroll yeah, in one yeah. state versus another, why would you do it? Now, exactly. let me ask you an HR question on yeah. this. Is there any, yeah, that's clearly the state you live in is not a protected class, right? So <laughs> it, could that be considered discrimination? Have there been, has that been challenged in court where an employee could say they didn't hire me because of where I live? From a state perspective, I, I've never seen one. I've, I have never seen one. I, so I would not venture to guess that there would be any kind of a lawsuit I mean, again, I don't know what I don't know, but where somebody claimed discrimination because of a state. Now, a zip code, that's different. A zip code, that's different. Because if you say, I do not want to recruit from this specific, from this specific zip code, and that specific zip code has a protected class that's predominantly more than another class, then you might run into an unintended discrimination issue there, which can get you. Um, Again, that's just zip codes. When it comes to the state, I mean, uh, cities or or different towns or counties or state, I don't think that that's a possibility. But if you say, I'm not going to recruit out of that area, that can come back and bite you. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Diff diff on different a way. micro level, not a macro level. So, okay. So I'm not an attorney, by the way, want everybody to know I am not an attorney <laughs> and everything I'm saying is just based on my experience alone. Had to throw that out there. Oh. Got it. I have to. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Not an attorney. Not financial advice. Okay. No, absolutely so, not. Um, any other pros you can think of before we move on? Um, no, well, oh God, they're there. All the pros I can think of, to be honest, are for the employee. I don't know why I can't think of a pro for the manager above and beyond what you just said. Well, other look, than I mean the, the the cost savings alone is it's, is is it's huge. Big. I mean, that's that's big enough. And the candidate pool. I mean, those two things, that's plenty. Those are enough pros because those are, those are historical big struggles that companies deal with. Can't find, you know, the candidates they need um, and they have a limited candidate pool depending on the the, the specialty and the, and the business that they're in. Um, and then of course, you know, expenses, right? Every company wants to lower expenses. Now the cons, if we move on to those now, well, you have well, to start. If huh? I can see something real quick. Yeah. It, it, it's I'm about to ask you a question that I don't think you're going to see coming. If a pro is it's it's cost savings, and that is music to the ears of CFOs of pro for, pro, for for profit organizations, yep. 
why are we having so many issues with leaders wanting to bring people back into the office then? I mean, now that's we're on to the, the cons. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. You have to yeah. balance. You have to balance that. It, you know, and so the cons are employee productivity. Mm -hmm. And it's it's kind of funny to me that you see studies talking about how productivity has increased. Um I've seen them. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, they're all produced by the employees. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. You um, mean that's not relevant? <laughs> but it it can, right? Yeah. I'm I'm not necessarily going to take a stance on that because I think it is so much about the individual, but, but yeah. that's part of the consideration. My experience it, it, you know, has taught me that one individual, you know, there are almost two types of, of, of workers, right? There are those who need supervision, they need direction, they need to be in a structured environment. Mm -hmm. And then there are those who don't. And so the ones who don't are going to thrive remotely, just as if they would thrive in the office, but the ones that's who true. do are going to be fish out of water in that situation. And that is not an indictment on those individuals. It's just about human nature and and, and their personality type, who mm -hmm. they are. And it, it, it's just, I don't think anyone would dispute that. It sounds like a knock on those individuals, but it's true. And yeah. so there are, are um, company, depending on your workforce, you, you may find that um, your employees aren't as productive in the office. You may find things like communication, training. There was a guy, um, oh gosh, he was an executive from some large organization. I just saw a quick uh, video clip on Twitter a couple of days ago where he was making the case that creative uh, creativity is going to lack, right? You're not going to have good business ideas just materialize with people sitting around the, uh, you know, the same conference table. Now I, I challenge, I question that uh, mm -hmm. because I think creativity generally comes in moments where you have time to think um, right. not where a bunch of people are talking together. I mean, that, that's just not how, where I'm most creative, uh, but maybe that's again, maybe that's just me. So the cons are, is your business going to suffer because you have a remote workforce and if, and that's going to be yes, in some cases, I think. I think it depends on the business though, right? It really depends on the business and what kind of, uh, what, what kind of plan and structure you put in place to be ready for it. You can't just wake up one day and say, ah, everybody's remote. Now, that's what happened in March of 2020, but the companies who, who transitioned from working in an office to a remote workforce back in March of 2020, the companies who plan appropriately and they did it right, they laid out a really good foundation to the organization that are still thriving with that model today. I mean, that, 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 that's a no brainer. And so let, what let's talk mean? about that. Yeah. But, but one more con for me is training and development. I think that that is something that's better done in person in a, in a perfect scenario. I agree with that. I, although, although they are, it, it's every month that goes by, there's a new app, there's a new uh, um, a widget that comes out that makes training virtually just that much more exciting. I mean, look, it, we talked about this a few uh, a few years ago. The metaverse is going to be big in training here in about ten years, right? Because we haven't talked about the metaverse in a while. But that that what's happening right now is going to set the stage to have a virtual reality type of training, unlike we've never seen before. And I know that's not what we're talking about right now. But when it comes to virtual reality, when it comes to AI, I know we're going to talk about that later on. That's going to change a lot of things. That's going to make working remotely that much more comfortable than what it was five, 10 years ago. But how we get there, organizations just need to make sure that they set up the right process in place because otherwise that con is going to be a big one. The training and development, Pete, I'm the first one to tell you, I hate boring training programs. And if you tell me I got to go to training and the person kind of talks like this, like Siri, you lost me before I even started. <laughs> so before yeah, I even started. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting that you would say that because I, I agree. I think everyone, most people would, you know, sitting, it, it sounds like if it feels like school, then you know, who likes that? Right. No one likes school. Nobody. Really. Nobody. So, <laughs> but I think of training more of just uh, proximity to senior experienced people um, where you know, our, it employ 
doesn't get the benefit of overhearing a conversation or having someone overhear their conversation. Mm, I get jump that. in to say, Hey, here's a better way to say it. Here's a different way uh, to approach this scenario. Those things happen all day, every day in the office. Yep. And now those are taken out of the equation. And I do see that as a detriment for both the business and the individual in their development, because it, everything now has to be planned and, and, done with a purpose in mind versus just happening. And while I, so that's the the segue into this is let's talk about how to plan, but you can't plan for everything. You can't account for those little hallway conversations. And like I said, overheard conversations that, that are going to happen. Someone dropping in, I mean, our new employees now, I don't have the chance to build rapport with them. Um, Ah, I don't have the chance to develop a relationship with them to run into them and, you know, in the hallway, so to speak, and just get to know them individually and vice versa. So I can guarantee that the perspective that they have about me is different than the perspective they would have if we were in the office and vice versa. So that's, you, I don't think you can replicate. And so you can't, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, and 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 I could not agree with you more, Pete. The camaraderie is big, is big. Right. That's a human aspect. That's a human connection, and that is my biggest, my biggest con of a re, of a remote workforce, right? That one right there, just because again, I rather work in an office, right? Unlike unlike how you said it, you know, that you rather work at home. I like I I get my energy by talking to other people. I get creative. Uh, more create. I have a hard time starting an idea. Once I have the idea, I I am a machine. It rolls through. And I work best when I'm around other people and somebody shoots an idea that I can work off of. I don't get that at home. I mean, what do I have? I got my son when he's out of school, right? You know, I got maybe the Sopranos playing on TV on mute, right? I don't want to get any ideas from Tony Soprano when it comes to HR, right? I'm not there yet. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's I need I need some human connection, Pete. As you can well, tell. So, so back to the planning, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, let me ask, do you not feel that right now? Do you not feel that through, through online interactions? I do. Um, Not as much because as soon as we're done here, I mean, normally if I, if, if we're having this conversation at the office, normally we go get some coffee, we go, you know, walk around, we go talk to somebody who we see, you know, just impromptu conversations where this is structured, not that structured is a bad thing, but somebody who's a free spirit structure is is a headache, <laughs> and that's me. Uh, and and I don't like structure, and I know that's not what people want to hear. Um, I like to talk about as proof of this podcast at this very moment because we're not going on task. Uh, we're, I'm making a left here real quick. I I I I work best when I'm able to address a topic at hand and ideas that come up at hand. Well, we're gonna we're gonna put you on the couch after, and we'll we'll do your counseling <laughs> session. Um, got it separately. <laughs> so, Sopranos, pun. There you go, Sopranos. Go ahead. The uh, but you do have to plan, and you do have yeah. to account for the different individuals. Um, and planning takes technology uh, consideration. Uh, we use Slack heavily now. It's not something yeah. we we used previously, and I love it for the reasons you just described. You can just kind of pop in on on someone if they're available, and people can choose to make themselves accessible that way or not at any given time. Um, and if they are, then you can have those chats on the fly. You can do it on video. So I think the technology has to be embraced and thought out as well as part of this plan and understand how you're going to use it and embrace it as an organization. Um, because though it can make the difference in those scenarios, like you just described. Um, and I feel in a weird way, even more connected to individuals than I did before, because we really? brought in our vendors into, um, Slack who we work with okay. regularly. And so I well, don't true. have to schedule a meeting with them. So it's, that is true. <laughs> yeah, there's, it's evolving, right? It's evolving, but you have to pay attention to the tools that are available to you. Try them, see what works, and then incorporate them into um, into your workflow. And that's the key. That's the key right there, because I love Slack. You, it, it's, you know how, how I feel about it, but you got to communicate differently. 
because now in Slack versus in person, it's very easy to take th things out of context, right? So for example, if I say, oh my God, I can't believe this happened in all caps on Slack, how you take that message, it de really depends on the context of the conversation or what else happened or what kind of emoji I use. Right. If I don't use an emoji, people think I'm screaming. If I use a happy emoji, people think I'm excited, yeah. right? If you don't use those tools, your message can be completely misunderstood. So, it, right. So, and, and yes, and, and to that point too, make sure that you you're you're taking the time to communicate about things that aren't work related. Uh, have a little fun with it on occasion. Do it appropriately. You know, every company is going to handle that differently. Yeah. But if it's all business all the time, that will be depressing and. Oh. As we've talked about, now that those just those interactions that don't happen on Monday morning, where you get to talk about the weekend, uh, we, we don't get to do that. But use Slack for that. There's there's yeah. you, know, you create channels for different uh, purposes and and have a little fun with it with it too. Um, what other considerations are there for managing your remote workforce? Um, one thing we we haven't talked about is. Uh, recognizing accomplishments. I was just about to say <laughs> that that that's something that you, you 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 can't forget to do those things just because you're not all together. And let me give you an, a great example for everybody listening out there from an employee's perspective, right? Because from a manager's perspective, it, it's it's difficult. It's different to what he or she has been doing prior to the pandemic. But from an employee's perspective, you already feel disconnected. Right. You just going to do the work and that's it. There isn't any popping over um, uh, the uh, the I almost call it a stall via cubicle. Hey, you want some coffee? No, that doesn't exist anymore. It's work, work, work. That's all you have to do. So, yes, from any from an employee's perspective, when there is there's a win as a leader, call that out. Yep. recognize and give them some feedback, do whatever you need to do. Cause I know you can never replicate the human connection, but do whatever you need to do to make the employee feel like they belong part of the team and let them know whatever means you are able to, to do this, to let them know that they still matter. I know that's kind of sound cliche, but what they're doing for this organization affects the bottom line. If you as a leader are able to connect the goal of the organization, the reason the organization exists down to how this employee makes a widget and how that affects it, you've done your job. So you could be able to do that online as well. You just, you need a little bit more creativity, more elbow grease for that. So with everything else we're talking about, plan ahead for that. Yeah. Don't just assume it will happen. Uh, make a point and, and have a plan for it. Yeah. So the last now, thing I, I want to add uh, on this for today is that um, I think all of this is about, we keep talking about planning and in the need for that, but share your, create policies and share them. We have to yes. create new policies for this dress code being one that is of course comes to the top of mind, right? I, I mean, how you dress, um, should be something you communicate to to yep. your team. Don't don't make assumptions. Uh, what other policies need to to be in place? I think the the other policy that needs to be in place. Yes, it, it's dress, but how your space looks. Make sure that your space looks appropriate for work. Right? You can. It, it's it's. I mean, I can come up with a lot of different examples, but make sure that your background. At the end of the day, what you have to do, folks, is whatever vision comes on the other end from this uh, this uh, online environment needs to be as close to what your office will look like as possible. Right? I'm not saying you have to have a teamwork picture up there with the people rowing with a really inspirational message. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. We can, we can all picture immediately when you say that. Yeah. <laughs> right? Of course. Right. Like, why is that doing in your bedroom? That's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that, cause I, I saw this when the pandemic first started that I'm talking to some people and Pete, there's like a mountain of, uh, of, uh, of um, laundry in the back. Right. And it was so big. And I'm like, dude, do I have to go over there and help you? I hate laundry, but that's distracting. <laughs> Let me go over there and help you with that. That's a really nice way of saying, oh, I need to blur my background. So, well, and, yes. And you know, credit to Zoom for figuring out how to give people <laughs> options to, to have you. other pictures in their background.
Right. Absolutely. And and some of them are really good. And I'm like, God, how much are they paying you over there? You got a corner office over there? Because it looks really good, those those, those backgrounds. But um, no, it, it's it's you've got to share those policies, right? Because you can't just let it let it out be out there like the wild, wild west. Create those policies, make sure those policies are fair and and share them and share them. Can I add one more to that, Pete? Um, if people thought it was hard to onboard people the right way before. Imagine virtually, you've got to pull out all the stops to let a new employee know that they belong to the organization. You can't just do a virtual uh, um, uh, onboarding uh, orientation for an hour or so. You've got to make a spectacle, a spectacle spectable of it. My God, I can't talk right right now. You've got to be able to set up meetings in person with people that are local. Make sure that you pull out all the stops to make sure that person feels like they're a part of the team. Because if you start that person's first day on the wrong foot, they're not going to last very long. They're not. So make yep. sure you've got the right processes in place to do that virtually, that it makes it as humanistic as possible. I like it. That's a great way to finish. Uh, make sure people get off to a good start. And that is as important, if not more important virtually than it would be if you were in the office. So um, absolutely. And Pete, I'm going to go ahead and go on eBay right now and get you one of those teamwork posters and you, you put are? it in the back. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, yeah, I wasn't going to go here, but you, you're talking about your, your background and your environment and I'm staring at yours and you used to have the Martha Stewart look behind yeah, man. now I don't, I don't you've got all kinds of stuff going on now I'm, I'm trying to figure out you've got the 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 kid the kid from uh the christmas story you've, you've you know so i don't i don't know i don't know what's going on ricky you got it these gotta, are things that make me comfortable star wars the return of the jedi ralphie from yeah, yeah. the ralphie, from christmas story you. ralphie thank come on how do you not know ralphie pete ralphie i do know I, well it's okay i don't like the movie i'm not a fan i know i Whoa. know i didn't want to tell you that I, I've Whoa. never said that out loud to you. I'm not a fan. Mm -mm. Nope. Okay. I'm a Christmas vacation guy. And I love that I'm, too. Yeah. Wait, well, hold on, nope. Pete. I think you're the first person I've ever heard say they do not like a Christmas story. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll own it. I mean, I, <laughs> I, it does nothing for me. It does nothing for well, me. Well, folks, you heard it here first. Pete hates me. Yep. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> is it because I said I'm going to buy you the teamwork poster? I was just kidding. Yeah, no, no. It's a, it, trust me. I, I that movie does not is not in the rotation during Christmas at my house. It's not. I mean, if my kids oh, have ever wow. seen it, it's not because I watched it with them. Um, <laughs> no, no. Oh man, every year TBS 24 hours of a Christmas story. Never miss it. I love right, it. Well, and now streaming services ruined it for me because now I got it on HBO Plus. I avoid it. This I avoided is, until Christmas Eve. This is what makes the world go round. So for everyone out there, you know, you, you can you can be on a different sides of any issue and still still be friends. It's okay. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. Okay. Although I don't, you hate I don't, I don't think, okay. I, I, hopefully you don't think I'm I'm awful for that. So next thing you're gonna tell me you hate Star Wars. Okay, so uh that will wrap oh, up uh, today's, today's <laughs> podcast. I don't hate it. I don't oh. hate it. I don't hate oh. it. Oh, just, Pete, you know. Pete, Pete, Pete. Yeah, it's because we're online. If we're having a couple of beers, I doubt, I doubt you would hate it so much. I don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate. I, it. I know I'm messing with you. My wife hates Star Wars. I don't hate Star Wars. Um, so thank you for <laughs> listening me. today. Ricky and I are going to debate movies off offline now. Um, oh. We'd love, we'd love feedback. If there's a topic yes. you'd like to hear us talk about, please email us. Higher calling, H I R E calling at fourcornerresources.com. If you've gotten this far. Uh, please rate and review us and check out Active Comply if you haven't already. Um, awesome. We are, we're, we're excited to be working with them, but you could, of course, work with them directly as well because um, the, the world is um, need, you know, we don't want to keep that a secret. The world needs to know what's going on over there. So great, great stuff for remote employees. And um, you're going to close with, with Ralphie. So uh, I think that that is goodbye for today. <laughs> Have a good one, folks. Drive safe. Thank you.